What's up, Star Family? Marissa here. So in this week's Tarot Tuesday video, I thought it would be fun and healing and just beneficial if we tuned into people's perceptions of you versus the reality of things. And for the most part, I am expecting some crossover, but sometimes these things can be drastically different depending on if we're going through an activation or initiation periods and we more or less like don't want to share all of our you know stuff for the world to see etc so when you're drawn to this video just keep in mind that this is how people are perceiving you currently at this time period so this is not necessarily a whole lifespan kind of thing but again if that's what resonates if that's what's coming up tune into your higher wisdom so we have four groups to choose from today You can choose multiple piles if that's what you're being called to. There's no right or wrong. Just my biggest piece of advice during tarot readings is to tune into what's coming through from your team behind the scenes. Any synchronicities, you can set an intention to see an animal or to hear a phrase or whatever it is during this reading, after this reading, etc. if you're just wanting a bit more confirmation. But otherwise, you guys already know, you guys already know you're your best teacher is pretty much what I'm trying to say. So without any more jibber jabber, let's get into this week's readings. All right, star family, if you guys chose pile number one, this is your reading. So let's see, I think I'm going to start off with keeping these ones. So I've separated this into a few different piles. So this was how others are perceiving you. This stack of cards is what's really going on and then this card kind of represents the bridge or how accurate the perception to reality is so i'm just going to set that off to the side for now and we're going to start with the animal card that i pulled for you guys and the tarot so this represents how you're be being perceived at this time by those around you so first we have the firefly so i think first i'm just going to tune into the energy of this because this is the overall the tarot we'll, we'll get more detail with but this is just the overall representation of how you are being perceived by the vast majority of people at this time because it's never going to be as black and white as we want it to be <laughs> nothing on this plane ever is right so right away you just appear as an extremely bright being i'm just guided right away noticing how in this you know vast darkness you're appearing almost as like a flashlight or like it seems like you are a guide for other people um it seems like you are an individual that can shine a lot of light in areas that like you shine light on things and places and spaces i feel like for other people that they are unaware of so i feel like you're you're just showing up as a guide for many people many people see you as someone that is quite reliable you're someone that has a lot of insight you're someone that just seems to know how to navigate this reality you're very comfortable in darkness and i feel like because of that you shine extremely bright like you're not afraid to meet your own shadow i feel like you're not afraid to be alone this is telling me that this isn't most people see you as an individual that's quite introspective and someone that for the most part has a pretty easeful time again navigating the shadow realms and navigating the shadow self you just appear as for for many people i'm sure you're the person that most people will go to when they are in a pocket of darkness or when someone needs advice so everything i'm saying is quite parallel and congruent to what it means to be an old soul it just seems like you guys have seen a lot and you know a lot you've been around the block a few times and so you just harbor such wisdom no matter what your age is you will always feel and appear beyond your years you know even when we when we get older i know i've met many older people many elders that doesn't seem like they matured much past their 20s you know what i mean and there's no judgment there every soul's on their own journey for different reasons i don't know why i'm not going to pretend like i know why right it's just how it is but you guys are an individual that you just continue to build off of your wisdom and people love i don't know i'm i'm like people i think you help people a lot through their emotional troubles i'm just i feel quite emotional right now like people feel very grateful to have you in their life 
you just offer such clarity and you're hopeful. Yeah, you offer a lot of hope for people. I think that's why I'm getting emotional because you know, you're one of you're very rare in the eyes of other people. They don't come across a lot of individuals like you. I feel like you're very bright. You know, this is not to say that you don't have your your days, right? You're part of the collective of humanity. So you're gonna feel the weight of humanity, right? And the weight of the planet at points. But overall, I feel like you give a lot of hope to people in their darkest hour. And that's just telling me that you have been through a lot within your own self, right? We can only authentically help other people when we've gone through these things ourselves. Otherwise, it's just kind of lip service and it seems very inauthentic when, you know, people who haven't really been some through something is trying to help you out of a pocket of despair. It's like, no, you've been through it. And so that's why you are able to be such a powerful light and a powerful guide for other people at this time. I wouldn't be surprised if you've had a lot of those experiences growing up where it did feel like you went through a lot, you know, especially because I feel like I'm dealing with a group of mature to old souls. So people that have incarnated probably hundreds if not thousands of lifetimes. I wouldn't be surprised if in order to catch you up to speed within this lifetime, your soul's blueprint early in incarnation contained a lot of codes of having quite a lot of hard and heavy type of of experiences in order to catch you back up to speed so to speak with with all of the wisdom that you gathered from other lifetimes so just for timing's sake i'm going to get into the tarot see what the tarot has to say so we have the sun coming through not surprised so again this is like confirming this warmth that i was feeling and i just want to show you guys here that you know those bursts of light look quite parallel to each other so yeah i mean i feel like i want to get into the rest of it just to see what else is coming through so we have the four of swords so very contemplative i'm seeing more of this burst of light type of uh imagery coming through and then we have the hermit okay so you can't yeah i know you guys hear me say this so much probably if you've been tuning in but you really can't make this up like tarot readers and oracle card readers we love this stuff because it just confirms just like you really can't make this up when you see all of these parallels and synchronicities coming up. So pretty much everything through this one card is being confirmed here. So this is also telling me that this is how, I feel like this is how you've been most of your life. Uh, you know, I had, did that kind of disclaimer in the beginning. Um, this is how you've been most of your life, I feel. You've been, you know, with the Four of Swords and the Hermit card, this is very contemplative type of energy. You know, again, we have this, this candle flame kind of showing up in darkness, which is very much so confirming the imagery here. So there's a lot of there's a lot of the same story being told here. You guys are I just heard resurrection. Anytime I see these doves, I think of resurrection in general. I feel like you guys have gone through quite quite a bit of dark night of the souls period periods i think you guys are the type of beings that are going out going through initiation after initiation after initiation so you know this four of swords just it really does talk about a time of healing a time of contemplation a time of kind of assessing where you're at and you'll notice that this little guy's third eye is quite activated i feel like in general this kind of tells me this is just confirming all of the work that you've done on yourself that really can only be achieved when you're okay with being by yourself with this hermit energy coming through. So people see you as like, you're very warm, you're very bright, people are drawn to you. I'm getting this kind of like, um, like extroverted introvert energy or introverted extrovert, or maybe you just resonate as being an ambivert, but you're comfortable in groups of people or you're becoming more comfortable in groups of people. I feel like the more you deepen into yourself, the more you are understanding that we're all kind of going through the same thing. You know, no matter how things again look on the surface, no matter how it appears on the surface, I feel like you guys have come to grips with, we're all going through the same thing. We're all really telling the same story no matter how good it looks on the outside, like everyone's going to have these types of ebbs and flows. And I think that's, you know, the more you deepen into your own shadow, interestingly enough, activates more of your light here with the sun. You know, the sun and the hermit. I mean, what more powerful cards can you get? I mean, what more, what, what, you can't get more accurate 
or accuracy from this is what I'm trying to spit out here. <laughs> Pile number one, it's like the more you go into yourself, the brighter you become, right? And the more authentic you become to yourself too. Also, I'm, I'm seeing this, like you guys, again, have been through a lot of moments or have had a lot of these experiences where I feel like it feels like the world is against you or like it feels like people are against you, like, this tends to come up a lot during my readings and I'm not surprised if you're drawn to my channel because this is within my soul's blueprint. So I wouldn't be surprised, you know, like attracts like. So if you guys have gone through a lot of experiences where you've been bullied or you've been misunderstood and you've kind of been like this outcast, you know what I mean? Which <laughs> with the hermit energy, I wouldn't be surprised because we kind of, you know, older souls, advanced souls tend to feel better alone because it's like, I don't want to say there's not many of us, but for the most part, I feel like you guys are surrounded by people that just aren't where you're at. And so I'm just seeing with this, like the swords being suspended, I think you guys have had a lot of experiences where people have thrown daggers at you and you've been divinely protected. Like people just see you, no matter what you go through, you kind of always come up on top, right? And this is not to say that you don't have relationships that are very healing right now and that are very, you know, very nurturing. Uh, because the more you become yourself, the more you're going to attract those individuals that kind of reflect that, you know, that brilliance that you so clearly emanate. But I feel like before, you know, earlier in incarnation, it was probably in your soul's blueprint to, you know, kind of feel like you need to dim your light in order to fit in. But, you know, this firefly is kind of telling me that no matter how much you dim, like you're always going to stand out right? No matter how much you dim, like that light's going to be there. So you might as well just shine it as brightly as you can. So overall, very beautiful energies. Like people see you as very warm. People like to go to you for advice and just for comfort. People like being around you. You shine, you stick out in a room. You're very introspective, very contemplative. You've had a lot of these phoenix rising from the ashes type of experiences you're a very spiritual individual in general and i'm just getting overall you're an extremely old soul especially with this you know this turtle here turtles these types of turtles live till they're hundreds i believe it's like hundreds of years old not just like 100 but just like multiple hundreds maybe don't quote me on that but they live for a long time is what i'm trying to say they've seen a lot they've been through a lot and that kind of confirms this older soul energy that i'm getting from you guys so next i want to t dive into the accuracy of this or like what just what's actually going on so again how we're what is that oh <laughs> that's a crack on my phone <laughs> okay so how we're being perceived and what's really going on is not always congruent so i want to see how like what's really going on here um so these goddess oracles represented Okay, so we have synthesis and we have abundance. So I would say that what's actually going on is pretty much congruent to, I kind of want to see this last card. Okay, so we have, we have the sun coming up twice. I kind of want to put them next to each other. So yeah, this is almost, I don't even need to look at this card, but I'm going to. This is kind of confirming that people's perceptions of you is, is quite accurate. It's very spot on with the reality of things. I feel like you guys are, yeah, you guys spend a lot of time in nature probably with this uh, synthesis card coming through you guys. And that's probably one of the reasons why like you just carry this very mother earthy kind of energy, regardless if you're female or male in this incarnation. You guys have gone through a lot of healing you guys have taken your healing into your own hands with this um interesting that this four of swords with this little lamb's third eye lit up is coming right underneath or right above this one and, and her third eye is coming through so i feel like when you guys go through tumultuous experiences or when you're going through a lot i feel like you tend to go to nature in order to heal yourself right like i feel like when you're in nature too i just get this sense of awe from no matter how old you've been i get the sense that you've always kind of felt like this deep reverence is what i'm feeling for for nature in general so you guys probably go on a lot of hikes you guys probably like to go camping you guys are probably into something like van life or you know a schooly life or whatever i'm kind of getting this vibe that you guys are non-conventional in a lot of ways or unconventional i should say and that's just again because I feel like you've kind of had no choice, like your soul's blueprint kind of led you in this direction of either owning it for what it is or feeling 
so utterly and completely like beside yourself and so off that you kind of like been nudged into a corner where you've had no choice but to just own your brilliance and own who you are yeah, people see you as very uh, very abundant. I mean, this Lakshmi card about abundance is is pretty much what the sun card represents. Like, you're just a being that, like, people see you as so abundant and so prosperous, regardless if, like, this is not just financial, right? Abundance and prosperity, when I talk about it, it's not necessarily financially, although that could, you know, play a part either now or somewhere down the line. But I just see you, like, look at these elephants are just showering her just showering this individual so i feel like people just like like shower you in compliments and shower you in love because they can't help it like you are you just emanate such brilliance and you make them feel so good like you're life-giving right you guys are an individual that i'm sure you just like you overflow like you overspill with so much goodness that like people can't help but want to give that back to you like you're extremely generous i feel like whatever you have to share like you share with other people what you can and in ways that like this is not like you know typical again this is like try to get out of the realms of conventional or conventions here like i feel like even in just your words is what i'm hearing you're very affirming of the people around you you see the best in other people and that's not to say that you're blind to people's shadows but you just understand that's part of being here right we have the lotus and you know one of my favorite phrases from the lotus is no mud no lotus right the lotus flower grows in mud so again there's it's it's so much confirmation of like the balancing of polarities and you re just really owning who you are and the brightest beings that i've come across the most authentic beings i've come across in this incarnation are those beings that truly have known the most darkness and yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why you guys shine so much is that you've kind of leaned into it. You've really leaned into it. You've allowed it, you know, with the synthesis, you've allowed it to synthesize you. I'm also hearing alchemy. So you've allowed it to alchemize. Alchemize you. Sorry, I was seeing an, an image of a bird. I'm seeing a lot of crows. I'm seeing owls. There's elephants coming through here. You know, we have the firefly, the dove, the turtle, the lamb. So these might all be symbols that you're already seeing, or I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing them like crazy after this reading. Come on, get this last card. So we have the Ten of Pentacles. So, okay, this reading was just so flawless. This was such a great group to start this off. So, I mean, this is kind of confirming everything. Ten of Pentacles is the card of ultimate abundance. This is family life. This is material life. This is, you know, I'm seeing pets. I'm seeing a home. I'm seeing a castle. Like... So I feel like regardless of what numbers have been reflected in your bank account, like overall I'm getting that you guys have always been taken care of. Even if it hasn't always felt ideal at moments, I feel like you guys are the type of person that would always have a place to stay, like people would open their homes to you. Like I'm getting this sense that your level of abundance, you know, for some of you, obviously with the pentacles here, it is tangible and maybe there are numbers. In your bank account that reflects this what is that is that virgo oh yeah i'm getting earth signs here obviously uh oh yeah virgo is coming through real strong here but i'm feeling like because you offer so much on an energetic level to people that you know people would just be so willing and ready to open their doors to you you know you'd always have a place to stay is pretty much what i'm gathering here and it's because on a holistic level, like you bring so much to other people that money could never get close to touching. Like you bring a true type of prosperity to the lives of others. I feel like even if things haven't always turned out how you wanted them to, whether that be a financial level or relation, relationally, whatever it is, you guys just appear as the individuals that, you know, you make the most out of whatever situation you find yourself in. And just keep in mind that whatever seeds you're planting, you know, they will take, they will bloom in their own way, in their own time for whatever reason, right? This message really strongly was coming through of like, you know, sometimes when we're planting seeds and we don't see the fruit of it right away, you know, just keep in mind that the sunflower and the oak tree, for example, they blossom at extremely different rates. 
the sunflower blossoms quite rapidly, right? But then it also dies quite rapidly. And there, there's no comparison of negative or, or positive here, but just bear with me for this analogy. The oak tree blossoms and it sprouts a lot more slowly, but the oak tree can also last hundreds of years, like 500 years. So don't doubt your level of abundance and like, I guess what I'm trying to say is you're not doing anything wrong if you're not seeing your manifestations or what it is that, like if you're not, you don't feel like you're seeing accurate re reflections of how you feel inside and what's happening outside. Like you're being nurtured on a higher level and so sometimes things can seem unfair but it, the reality of it is, is your higher self is just, your higher self is keeping the necessary foundations in place. And I'm just seeing like a gate, like it's keeping the necessary things in place so you can grow in a way that is much more authentic and really honoring the truth of who you are. You know, it's almost like when a plant is starting to grow kind of sideways, sometimes we need that support and the stability in order to keep it growing in the way that it's supposed to. And so I feel like one of the reasons why you guys are so bright is because you've had many things that continue to redirect you. Even if at the, at the time it felt very unfair, the things that you were going through, ultimately looking back, you're like, damn, I'm so grateful that happened because it shaped me in such a way and it's deepening you. It's, I'm just getting the sense that you're really deepening into the truth of you and who you came here to be. Right, and so this is, um, I feel like people's perceptions of you are quite accurate to the reality of it, regardless again, if on a material level, it seems that way, right? I feel like ultimately you're, you're the type of person that because you are the way you are, like you, I'm just seeing so much light here, like you're such an enlightened being, like you've activated so many of your light codes. People, are, people understand that it's only a matter of time. And so you just might be this individual that you're planting and you're seeding extremely firm foundations, but you know, just when you are ready to sprout and when that momentum picks up, man, it's like you're going to grow and you're going to blossom so much quicker than I think you even realize. But because we do have this four of swords with the hermit card coming up, I feel like you've kind of been in this space of just nurturing the seeds and, and being in this space of just kind of being humbled by the universe in order to, you know, keep your priorities. You know, it's just kind of a foolproof way that the higher self just keeps the integrity of your intentions in alignment with what it is that you set out to achieve in this lifetime. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes when we are dealing with a lot of people or dealing with the lives of other people, when we're showing up as a leader in certain ways, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And so it's like your, your higher self is just has just created these ways so you don't falter. So overall, uh, you guys are showing up extremely, as extremely beautiful beings to, in the eyes of others, and that's you know quite accurate to what's really going on. You guys seem like you're in a very beautiful place, a very beautiful space. Again, doesn't mean that we don't go through ebbs and flows like anyone else on this planet. However, ultimately, you just appear as this very nurturing, very bright, um, this beautiful guide and mentor for many, many people. And I feel like you guys are coming more and more and more. Like I'm just hearing this is the beginning for whatever reason. Like again, coming back to that analogy of planting seeds, I feel like there's a lot in store for you and you're gonna have abundance raining down on you, literally raining down on you in so many different forms. And it's like, you know, keep up. You're doing a great job, whatever you're doing, keep it up. All right, pile number one, I hope I see you soon, much love. What's up, star family? If you guys chose pile number two for your perceptions versus reality reading, this is it. We're gonna get right into it. So these cards, I'm gonna save for later. We'll get into that a little bit later. And these cards kind of represent how people are perceiving you, at least at this point in time to when you're drawn to this video. So we're gonna start off with the animal cards. You guys had two animal cards come through in one tarot. So we have the golden egg and the hawk. Okay, so right away, how people perceive you. 
So people perceive you as an extremely spiritual individual. It seems like for the most part you are very heart-led. In the eyes of others, you seem to see a lot more than most people. You kind of have this bird's eye view of what's going on. You, you appear to continue to get brighter and brighter, like you're consistently going through glow ups. You know, I'm just seeing this hawk is, you know, flying into the light. So it seems like you're consistently going through phases and stages of evolution. You seem to other people, you seem otherworldly is what I'm hearing. You seem like you have secrets that other people don't have the ability to, to tap into. Again, so you have this, the Anahata Chakra coming up with this golden egg. You, uh, you fly fearlessly in the direction that you're led regardless if other people understand why it is you're moving and the way you're moving or towards the direction you're moving again because it seems like at least to other people it seems like you have a very good grip on your emotional guidance system i'm seeing a lot of yellow coming up here so you you come across as very sure-hearted and very sure of yourself you're very confident it's interesting too, the way these cards are, are lying next to each other, it's like, it almost looks like the egg and the hawk is flying away from its nest. Which is really interesting. So how I'm interpreting that is, yeah, there's like this fearlessness. It's like the things that are the most precious to you Like you have this delicate and this intricate way of nurturing what's most precious to you by not being so attached to them. It's like you don't baby your projects, you don't baby what it is that you're trying to create in this world, or at least this is how people perceive you. It's like you come across very nonchalant about the things that mean the most to you. You come across as just like knowing that everything is gonna work out. Yeah, people just see you as being very bright, very confident. Like the hawk has its chest open, its heart looks very exposed. And I just, I, you know, from having this deck for quite a while, I do know this golden egg does represent the heart chakra. So anytime I see it, I think of that. This is, you're just an individual that's very, you seem very free to other people. You seem very untethered. You seem like you're not afraid of, you're not afraid. And again, people just, see you as being very mystical and very very spiritual individual okay let's see what the tarot has to say so we have temperance coming through so we have another bird so we have a heron or is that wait no is that a heron what is those things that carry the babies i think that's a heron oh I'm th i think i'm thinking of pelican but i don't think that's a pelican that's a heron and a hawk so more birds coming through, interesting. I do know that both of these birds, they are very, you know, some birds fly in flocks, but these birds in particular fly by themselves. Seeing these birds, at least for me, I know nature speaks to me, but when I see these birds, they both represent different animal totems, but the overlays that I am seeing here is they are very independent. They're very, you know, able to fly alone. They're able to exist alone, and that does exude a certain level of confidence when you're not afraid to be within your own company. It's like you've really become accustomed with who you are. People see you as a very balanced individual. You know, we have fire coming through, but it's also we have raindrops, raindrops coming down from the bird. And it also looks like the fire is a teardrop within itself, right? The teardrops look like flames, and the fire looks like a teardrop. So we have a lot of like you know, blending of energy is coming through. Yeah, and both the birds are looking the same direction. So it seems like you guys are the individuals that you don't look back. Like when you're dead set on something and when you know something is right for you, you just go for it. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna have periods of feeling like, 
like what the hell am I doing or where is this leading me? But for the most part, people see you. Again, this is how people see you. People see you as like when you want something, you go after it and you usually achieve it. And I feel like it's because you've done so much work, maybe not just in this lifetime, but throughout you know other lifetimes, other incarnational experiences, you've done a lot of work. You've done a lot of alchemization. Temperance, if I could rename it, I would, re I would name it alchemy. Because that's what I see when I see the temperance card. I feel like you've gone through a lot of spirit experiences that have alchemized this process you know in this day and age it's so easy for the heart chakra to want to close down with how much hostility especially at this time depending on when you guys are guided to watch this but i see it's gonna ramp up for a little bit longer before things start to cool down so for the most part we have a lot of experiences at least through the media that tell us that there's a lot of hostility there's a lot of you know anger there's a lot of excuses and reasons that we can give ourselves to close our heart down but you've just used that um, through the process of alchemy you've you've utilized that and you've made it into your gold you you have a heart of gold and people see that people feel that you feel very powerful when people are around you like you feel p powerful I'm, I'm hearing like striking I just heard striking and piercing like your voice is very soothing to people when you speak and it's very it's very unique you know I, I heard the hawk i don't even know it's not a call that's like more like a crow but i heard the hawk's call in my ear and it's very you can tell when you hear a hawk just like you can tell when you hear an eagle they're very distinct and there's no question about mm, what bird is it it's like i feel like you're writing or however you express yourself is very unique to you and sometimes people are even like wow i read something the other day that was something just like you would say or something just like you would write it's like you have a very distinguished essence about you you're definitely not a copycat is what i'm getting you're very much so yourself you're very unique and again this, these are people's perceptions so regardless this might not be how, how you see yourself but sometimes i love these types of readings because they can be so healing for me because sometimes most of the time we we tend to think that people see us in the worst light and so it's so healing when you can kind of you kind of can into it <laughs> the goodness that people probably see in you and when you get confirmation of it right but just for time's sake i'm going to move on into what's actually going on beneath the surface so we have victim and we have laughter Ooh, we have more yellow coming through so i feel like regardless of what's going on you guys make the most of your experiences right you make the most of whatever it is that is you make the most out of what's occurring around you I'm also hearing that one of the reasons you can come across very independent because again the reality of things is like yes I feel like there is crossover and this card kind of represents um, you know what the bridge is between these two and how accurate how accurate of a representation these two things are to one another or these two groups I should say the perception versus the reality but I feel like one of the reasons why you can be so independent or appear that way to other people i think you guys tend to heal or you feel a lot better when you're going through stuff on your own like i feel like you don't want to come across as a victim and i think it's actually quite a challenge for you to open up to other people so you have this tendency to want to laugh things off or to want to keep things lighthearted. and also i'm hearing that there have also been experiences where you have felt very victimized. You know, that's not necessarily like a, a bad thing to be a victim. Like it's one thing when you own it and when you're like adopting it as a personality trait and you're, you know, being like, woe is me. But for the most part, I feel like be, the, one of the reasons why you're so independent is because you've probably attracted experiences or you've, I even hate saying that attracted experiences. Like it's something you did, but just, based on your soul's blueprint there might have been many confirmations or experiences where you felt very cast out and you might have been victimized you know and that's again coming back to this feeling of alchemization that i was getting it seems like you've turned that blueness 
into brightness. So notice the blue and the yellow here, and then we also have this blue rising into a yellow up here. And then again, I'm not surprised that, that you would have this kind of very activated heart energy too. I wanna see what the tarot has to say. Let's get more detail about what's going on. So we have the Nine of Pentacles, we have the Two of Pentacles, and we have the King of Wands. So yeah, I don't think you, I think you've had many experiences where, or you're just the type of individual where you don't want to appear like you're a victim. So you tend to heal in private anyways. And so I feel like that's one of the reasons why you, this independent type of energy was coming through and it's being confirmed here through the Nine of Pentacles. Like you guys don't tend to lean on other people very much. I mean, the King of Wands pretty much confirms that. You know, we also have the lion coming up, um, you know, the leader of the pack again within this king of wands. So you, you come across as a leader to other people. And, you know, there's a lot of depictions of fire coming through here, too. So it's like, again, this notion of alchemy continues to come up throughout this reading. Like you've done a lot of alchemization. It's allowed you, it's led you in certain directions that without those experiences of being victimized or being cast out or whatever, I don't think you would have been the person you are. And so there's a level of appreciation that I'm, I'm feeling. I feel like you've been through things that have allowed you to have a lightness about life, even in the darkest moments, even in the heaviest things, you have this lightness about you. You're able to laugh things off. I feel like you don't take yourself or in life too seriously. It seems like yeah, with this this two of pentacles, I just get juggling. Like you're, I feel like part of this is saying that you are in a phase where you are learning how to like balance yourself out again because temperance can represent balance. Like you're maybe being invited at this time to lean on other people a little bit more because if you notice in this pentacles card. Uh, one one of these bags is a lot more full than another like this one is filled in with color and brightness and this one looks like it's lacking a little bit so this can just indicate that there's a part of your life or a part of yourself that is getting a lot more attention th than other parts of you I kind of want to see what this last card is this is kind of like the bridge between perception versus reality what's actually going on Okay, so we have the Two of Pentacles coming up again. So I would say this is a pretty accurate blend, a pretty accurate, excuse me, representation of what is going on, like perception to reality is pretty accurate here. So how people are perceiving you, again, there most people only see the tip of the iceberg. They don't understand all the work that goes on beneath the surface of things. So what I love about, so this is the, the tarot of, I think it's called, what is this one? This is the light and shadow tarot. So on these tarot cards, there's both aspects of light and dark. So I feel like this is, again, just kind of confirming this temperance energy that's coming through. People do see you as being very balanced. Yeah, even when you feel unsure of yourself, like... It's like you can't make a wrong decision. And no matter how unsure you feel of yourself, like things always work out for you. Even better than you anticipated, even better than you expected. It's actually a rare being or not very many people feel comfortable in their own solitude. It actually shows a level of depth to you and it also reveals to you just the age of your soul, I should say. You've really set yourself apart from other people. So we also have orca whales coming through. We have a beluga. We have sea lions. We have otters and walruses coming through. We also have the lion and then we have the dove coming through. So. If these aren't symbols for you now, I wouldn't be surprised if you get inundated with these throughout 
the rest of today or the rest of this week. Yeah, ultimately, you guys, the perception and the reality is quite accurate. You've had many instances and many things that have allowed you to, that have get, kind of given you no choice but to blossom in a certain way. I feel like you guys wanted a, a certain foundation laid, like speaking from the level of the soul's blueprint. You wanted a certain type of foundation to be laid in order to grow in this direction that makes you such an independent individual. Right. I think if anything, the only negative thing coming through here is that like, you know, if you need help, you could ask for it, <laughs> you know, and just know that people would flock to you and want help. But ultimately, it's like you guys take care of what it is you came to take care of. Like you stand apart that like people, whatever it is that you exude, like you are so unique. You are extremely creative. You are very resourceful. Again, just the sense of using what you have to your advantage. And you're very, like, I just get the sense that you're extremely lighthearted, like very gypsy kind of soul, very, you know, no matter what field is, what field you're in, because you guys might actually be very successful entrepreneurs and business people, but at the heart of who you are is like this very carefree, this very gypsy soul, like you, you are so unattached again from the results of your efforts that that is what allows you to be so prosperous and whatever it is that you're creating or whatever it is that you're endeavoring after. And I feel like that's part of the reason why you are so successful is because there's like, it's like you really have, um, what is it? And the Bhagavad Gita talks about the path of devotion where you're giving everything up to God. And there's like, there's this saying as well that talks about, you know, don't be worried about the fruits of your efforts. Just focus on whatever it is that you're doing and let the fruit speak for itself type of energy and that's what i get from you guys like there's such an unattached kind of sense from you and people feel that they're like how can you like the the less you care not in like um not in a narcissistic way but the less that you seem to care about life and the less you take yourself seriously the more things work out in your favor and it's like you're setting yourself free along the way And it's just, I feel like it's just becoming lighter and lighter. It will continue to become lighter and lighter. Like no matter what happens, like you will always see the good and the bad and you'll always see a little bit of, yeah, you're very realistic. That was what was coming through. It's like you understand that nothing is here to stay. And so I feel like that's one of the reasons why you don't get too attached and you don't make negative things in your life mean that something negative is happening. Like most events that people would be like, oh, that's, oh, I'm sorry, like that's kind of shitty. You're like, yeah, whatever. And when things get really good, I feel like there's also a detached sense. And so you're kind of able to appreciate both sides of the light and darkness. Like these beings are so appreciative of each other because, you know, one would not exist without the other. And I feel like that's what has allowed this kind of detached sense. You, again, you've had so many polarizing experiences that you're like, no matter how shitty it seems, it'll be over. No matter how great it seems, it'll be over. And so that's what's, I think, also kind of led to this very independent type of energy from you is it's like you stand apart. Not a, not a lot of people are, are there. Not a lot of people are navigating life with the, at the level of detachment and non-duality that you guys seem to exist in. All right, friends, I'm gonna leave this reading here for now. I hope I see you guys soon. What's up, pile number three? This is your reading, perceptions versus reality. Let's get into it. So these first cards that I'm gonna flip over are how people are perceiving you at this time. So this might not just, this might not be a lifetime how people perceive you, but at least at this point in time is how you're being perceived by the vast majority of individuals. So we're going to start with your animal cards. We have the butterfly and we have the stingray. Ooh, okay. Look at this. This is like my first time. I didn't notice. Why have I never seen this? Like all of the chakras are like aligned. Why have I never noticed this on this? Wow. Interesting. Okay, so people see you as you got it going on, pile number three. Wow. If you guys, 
Yeah, wow, okay, I'm just seeing a lot of crossovers between this week's readings and last week's readings and just placements and piles and stuff like that. So people see you as, you guys are very beautiful, like on the inside to the outside. You guys just emanate this sense of aliveness and you guys are very aligned. I'm hearing you're very unique to yourself and again, I'm doing my best to distinguish or to separate your guys' energy from what's actually going on, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually quite accurate to what's going on. So again, this is how people perceive you. You're very beautiful, regardless of beauty standards, regardless of you know, Instagram models and influencers, regardless of all of that bull BS. You know what I'm saying? Like, You guys are so beautiful, and I'm hearing it's because you are aligned and you are aligning more and more to the truth of who you are and who it is you came to be. The stingray represents an individual that has grown, a, grown its backbone. So I'm hearing that the more you stay in alignment and you stay truthful to you, regardless of how different and how scary it might be to be so different, I'm just hearing that you are just like this rare beauty, this rare gem. Your rareness is what draws people to you. You know, even with this butterfly coming through, like this is not a typical butterfly that you really see. So I feel like even if there's like similarities or people think that they could group you into a certain group or a certain niche, it's like you stand out even amongst people that are very similar to you. People see you as, like they, just, they people really want to get to know you. I wouldn't be surprised though also if people are quite hesitant to approach you, like very intimidated by you. You know, the stingray is this being that's quite mystical. It's very different than a lot of the other creatures in the sea. However, I'm pretty sure, isn't that what, you know, got Steve Irwin? Like, I'm pretty sure their tails are what can like penetrate your body or like, I think their tails are like weapons. They can stray off predators or whatever through their, um, through their, their tail fin right here. I don't even know what that is called. But yeah, people just like, this might be weird, but like to admire you from afar. And that's not even a you thing. Well, it is kind of a you thing <laughs> because you're so like, you're so beautiful. Like people are speechless. They don't even know what else to say. I'm hearing too, there's not a lot of people that really get to know you on a deep level or that, you know, not a lot of people get to see your insides. That might, okay, that would maybe not be the best way, but just bear with me. Like this appears, these colors appear to be on the inside of this, this creature and the intimidation factor for other people kind of, I don't want to say repels you, but not a lot of people are able to meet you where you're at. And so I'm sure you're very cordial and very nice and very like regardless of how deep you're able to go with another person in conversation or how much you, how long you explore with them in life. Like ultimately not very many people I feel get to see like a certain depth to you. But regardless, people are very much so affected by your energy field. Like I'm seeing these lines kind of emanating outward from the stingray. Yeah, and it's like you brighten up a room, you bring a lot of color to your surroundings. I wanna see what the tarot has to say too. Okay, so we have the emperor, okay. So with the butterfly coming through, which kind of I feel like a very feminine energy and this emperor, it feels like you're very balanced. I mean, I'm not surprised this is coming up, you guys. I feel like people understand your level of depth or they understand like you've been through darkness, like you've been through some shit, right? So the butterfly can only become that beautiful, unique, elegant, mystical creature by first going through an intense period of darkness, right? That caterpillar has to be brave in order to 
build the cocoon around itself in order to immerse itself in its own shadow and its own darkness for it doesn't know however long right it doesn't know if it's even going to come out alive right that's also the path of the shaman but in doing so in trusting life and trusting the process you come out like tenfold than what you probably thought you would be going in and you know understand not many people are in a place where they can meet their shadows head on and so again i think that's part of this intimidation factor i'm getting is people don't know if they can measure up to you and again this emperor card kind of confirms like that like the emperor stands alone this tree is standing alone right and then we also have the depiction of the eclipse coming through too so again it's like you're not afraid to meet your shadow. Eclipse season, what we know about eclipse season, it brings up all of the heavy stuff to the surface. I mean, the stuff that we, that most people don't want to see, don't want to look at. I feel like you guys have, you know, are quickly chipping away at your karma and what it is that you came to clear, not just for your own field, but for humanity in general. I'm just seeing this very aligned kind of like symmetrical imagery through both of these cards here. So people perceive you, again, the emperor, I'm sure could be quite intimidating, but regardless of, I feel like no matter if people subconsciously place you on a pedestal, it's like, I feel like you don't, even if you can feel where they're coming from or you can feel that they have done that or you can feel that there's like a level of, of intimidation, I feel like you don't feed it. Again, because you're coming through as a very powerful and authentic and genuine guide. So I feel like you don't feed other people's intimidation factor around you. You can notice it, but you're just so lovely. Like you're just so benign that i feel like you very effortlessly like you don't even have to try but you are able to make other people feel comfortable around you as well i'm trying to spit out <laughs> like you you're able to make people feel like an equal around you because that's how you see other people you don't see anyone as being higher or lower i feel like you guys are individuals that have kind of come to grips with the nature of reality and that there's so much more underneath the surface going on and it's like you don't un i think you know you deeply feel that again trying to <laughs> separate energies of you and then how people are perceiving you but you know people just perceive you as being such an equalizer and I feel like you have done this work of, you know, building yourself up from the ground up that you have been humbled along your journey into being this, this being this leader. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys have some sort of platform where you have like a following of some sorts, like people not really look up to you. And I feel like because you have been through that groundwork of going through your darkness and leaning into your shadow and looking at the things that are the most painful to look at, because of that, it's like it's not like you're trying to not, you know, seem like you're above anyone. It's just natural for you because I feel like you don't actually feel that way. Like there's a saying in the Tao Te Ching that talks about, you know, the most powerful leaders are those that are unafraid to stand alone they're unafraid to have nothing they're unafraid to be looked at as you know the lowest of the lows and it's because most of them have been there and a lot of people don't grow strong roots into being an empowered leader because they don't want to go to the lowest of the lows right but a true leader doesn't see himself as any or herself as any higher or lower, as any better or worse than any other being. And if anything, they would place themselves at the bottom. That's actually what the Tao says. They would call themselves that, or at least at one point in, their, in time, they would call themselves the lowliest of the lows. And because of that, they stand so strong, right? You're unafraid to acknowledge that your lower nature is very much so part of who you are. 
and people really acknowledge that like you are so beautiful like i wouldn't be surprised if you have so many people like in your life seeing you okay just bear with me through this analogy like no matter who you date for example i feel like people see you as a person who could always do better again that but that's kind of revealing like their levels and where they're at the paradigms they're in but it's like no matter who you're with people don't see anyone as being good enough for you just because you are just such again that rare beauty you're just so rare but again that's not how you select your partners that's not how you again this is just people's perceptions of you it's like you actually you're not superficial is what i'm hearing okay let's move on because i could stay here for a bit just because of time's sake so we have this is representing uh what's actually what's actually going on so we have anger and rage and we have artemis selfhood so right away, I was I noticed how these cards aligned. It's like the arrow is pointing at this. So this kind of tells me again, you've done a lot of revealing of yourself. You've done a lot of introspection. It's like, you know, what's led you, this selfhood and emperor kind of remind me of the same energy. What's led you to being where you are and who you are is, again, you're unafraid to look at these things. I wouldn't be surprised too if anger and rage are actually part of your blueprint. Again, this is like the planet of polarity. So, you know, what people see on the outside and what's actually going on is not always congruent. Like people are only, only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Doesn't mean it's inaccurate, but I feel like what's going on beneath the surface, I, I, this is what I'm getting. I'm getting this notion of kind of like a social justice warrior or just like you're fighting for the underdog. And I feel like you guys are the type of being, again, with this emperor, it's like, I'm sure you've, like anyone else, have had your moments of, you know, being like that kind of emperor in reverse energy of being manipulative and all of this stuff, like we all can. However, for the most part, I feel like your anger and rage stems from the inequality on the planet. So, yeah, and this kind of pedestal energy, I feel like you've just had so many things in your life kind of show you about this pedestaling we have and this hierarchy we have, like within our culture. And you're quite sick of it is what I'm hearing. You're quite sick of how other people have done that. I think you kind of sh it's kind of shown you like the inauthenticity that it can draw out of other people. Like when other people see you as being very empowered, they treat you differently than they might treat other people but you see everyone as equal is what i'm hearing and so it's quite like it enrages you the hierarchy of humanity kind of enrages you really quick i do want to point out more of the animal totems coming through we have the lion we have the cobra we have a deer and we have a hawk coming through we also have a, a hare like a rabbit So you are a being, again, that has gone through many transformations. Anytime I see the snake, many transformations. We have the sun in full effect here. You guys are probably very fiery, very passionate. You guys know what you want for the most part. You're not afraid to go after it. You're very focused. You draw people in. So I am seeing quite a congruent nature between how you're being perceived and what's actually going on i just think for the most part people tend to see the good parts or they see what they want to they don't understand that you know what has driven you in a certain direction is probably quite unpleasant experiences and quite unpleasant circumstances in most in some cases it seems like you've actually had to fight to be where you are or it's felt like a battle to be where you are or it's felt like a struggle to survive yeah it's almost like you've um you had so much 
darkness and so much shadow apparent within this incarnation like you've taken on a lot of the karma of humanity in order to transmute it because you guys are coming through as very powerful i mean so it's the most powerful of beings that take on the most just keep that in mind it's like you're utilizing that as your catalyst moving forward people don't actually see don't actually see what's driving you Sekhmet and Artemis. So yeah, you guys are warriors. Especially with a stingray coming through too, I was like kind of thinking of like sword. Like you guys are just like, you guys are warriors. And I feel like Sekhmet is also very beautiful, showing up as very a, a very alluring type of individual. You lure people in. People are very intimidated by your energy. And I think it's because on the surface they can see you're beautiful. Like they're like, there's something about this person, but you just reflect aspects. You have done the work that other people are afraid to do. And so people are afraid to meet, not you, people are actually afraid to meet themselves. And your reflection kind of draws that out. So you might actually have very polarizing experiences. Like people are either here for you or people are not. Like there's very few in between. Like people have an opinion about you regardless and that's for a good reason it's like you're not here to fuck around man like you mean business we also have the the full moon and a full sun coming through and then we have that again here with the eclipse energy so it's like i'm getting very balanced aspects it's you're not condemning your shadow you're understanding that you know it's also an aspect anything in creation is an extension of the creator right so I feel like you you have decided to harness that aspect of yourself to use it for your advantage. I think it's Kyle C. Sutt says, when you're only acknowledging your light, you have access to this much power. But when you acknowledge and accept your shadow, you now have access to this much power. And so that's one of the reasons why you are so powerful and people can't put their finger on it because a lot of people have a hard time being as honest with where they're at and what's going on um, than you seem to. You seem to know where you want to go. Like all of these beings are kind of looking, you know, these beings are looking in the same direction. You know where you want to go and you go there. Like I feel like you kind of know your mission. I'm getting very entrepreneurial vibes as well. Lots of fire, a lot of passion coming through. Your tarot, we have the lovers. And when the lovers comes up, I think of passion. We also have the bow coming up twice. So we have the bow coming up here on her, you know, her little tattoo. And then we also have the bow and arrow coming up with Artemis. So it's like, I feel like people, you know, fall for you. Like there's a lot of people that, you know, would like to shoot Cupid's arrow <laughs> in your direction. I, th I think there's just not a lot of people that you guys meet that are on your level. And again, there's no hierarchy here, but there's not a lot of people that you meet that have done the type of work that you've done. But when that person does come around, I feel like it's very passionate. It's like, it's a place to channel and to kind of, you know, one of my past partners, it was so funny. She would often say how the Pleiadians recommend using sex and intimacy as a way to help channel and move energy. And so I think when you're with a really good partner that can bear to be around your power and your depth, then it makes way for an extremely beautiful romantic lustful but also very aligned on the higher levels too like you're a very passionate individual you're passionate for your people again that's the, with that anger and rage i'm just getting this sense of injustice you're just like it's not fair what's going on is not fair and you see the levels of hierarchy you see how people use power and seduction and manipulation to their advantage and i think it's kind of just like disgust is just what i what i heard of it's like you dream of a better world let's see just for time reasons let's move on so we have the princess of swords the page of swords coming through this was kind of the bridge between both realms so yeah i feel like you guys might feel I'm getting different age groups for all of this, but I feel like you guys don't 
see yourself or you really don't understand how above and beyond you are. I think you guys really sell yourself short. I feel like because you have such an up close and personal view of your shortcomings and your shadow because you're not afraid to look at them and your fears and the illusions and just like the, the veils that are still covering your eyes. I feel like that's what causes you to think you're not as far as most people see you. You know, you're always in this process of building. You're always in this process of up leveling. And I feel like going after what's truthful and right and like again justice is what keeps coming up is extremely important for you and it feels like whatever you guys are doing there's like this sense of being a novice or there's a sense of being new there's a sense of newness or like you're beginning something or almost like you guys feel like you are in this journey you're in this war by yourself or like you're not as prepared as you could be or something and it's like your feeling of that and how people are seeing you it is very different. It's like you very much so, I, I feel like you guys honestly don't see how amazing you are. Like you're coming, you're actually the emperor or the empress and you feel like you're the princess. Again, because there's that level of equalizing there's that I feel like because you guys are so humble that you guys almost think it's arrogant to just acknowledge where you're at because I feel like for the most part you guys are very very advanced souls and you don't I think you've stuck out most of your life for whatever reason and it's hard for you to accept just how powerful you are it's like you think that you're this princess you think that you're the page but you're actually the emperor the empress and again i think it is because you have looked and you have dove into the areas of your subconscious and you've been through very you've been through experiences that have justified this level of depth that you so clearly emanate that other people so clearly feel when they're in your presence all right star family i'm gonna leave this reading here now i hope i see you guys soon what's up pile number four this is your reading for perceptions versus reality in terms of how people see you so I'm going to lead you guys through how I separated all of these cards. We're going to start with people's perception of you, and then we'll dive into the rest. So I'm going to start with your animal card. You have deer. This was the only card that came up with one animal, right? No, maybe there was one more. There was one more. Never mind. But you have the least cards in terms of interpretations, because I did draw some tarot, but only one came out for you. So, <laughs> so what's coming through is like people want to get to know you, but I feel like you're hard to get to know. I almost hear like um, there's kind of like a skittish energy that can be about you. Like you're cautious to let other people around you or let people really see the depth of you. And not many people get to bask in your glory. I feel like you guys are, for the most part, pretty to yourselves. There is like this sense of somberness behind your eyes, however. Like when people look into your eyes, they feel like you've, there's like a weathered soul there. And weather doesn't necessarily mean bad. Somber is not something negative either. It's just like, I feel like you've seen a lot, or at least in this period of your life, your guys are kind of going through a lot. But regardless of the depth there, it's like you're one of those beings that a lot of people get excited to see. <laughs> like people are excited when they like get a glimpse of you. But again, there's this sense of being kind of cautious and kind of protective is what I'm getting. 
but you guys are very earthy. I wouldn't be surprised if you're seeing a lot of deers lately or if you see a lot of deers after this or if deers just come up in general. But deers ultimately are extremely elegant even when they are navigating danger. Or at the, again, that's at least how people perceive you as being very elegant even when you're navigating tough times in your life, tough time periods. I am just noticing how big the deer's ears are in this imagery. And so I feel like it's like people see you as being someone that just like, excuse me, like you're very perceptive. And people, I'm interpreting it as you are a clear audience, like you have unearthed and gotten to know and deepened your psychic abilities. However, people are just like, you're just an individual that seems to know a lot and not understand why. And you just seem to have access to levels and realms farther beyond what people can see. Like there's a lot more to you than meets the eye. And you just seem like this very mystical being, very down to earth at the same time, but it's like, Hmm. I'd be curious to see what else has to show itself because I am getting this sense that there's a reason why you are this way. And most people, it doesn't seem like they're judgmental of it, but they're just like curious. It's almost like they think that there's something about them. Like, why does this person seem so cautious around me? Like, why does this person not open up to me? But I think y'all have been through some shit. <laughs> like most of us on this planet or you're going through something right now where it's like you're not letting a lot of people get near you or get close to you. And people are seeing that. Like people, you're very beautiful. However, I feel like I'm just getting the sense that I want to get to know you. But it's like you're very standoffish. Like I want to come close, but you're like, uh-uh, this is as far as you can get. So your tarot says the fool. So right away, I see this as being a vulnerable creature, like this little chicky, chickity. Is, it seems very vulnerable, right? It's very new. It's like people see you as being hesitant at this time to jump into something new. It's like you want to, you, like on, on one hand, you want to get to know other people and you want to take the dive, but for some reason, I can't wait to see what's really going on with y'all, but for some reason, this is how other people are, is what I'm picking up. People are like, what is going on with this person? Like, I really want to get to know this person. However, there's like, and they, they can even feel too that you are like the, kind of hesitant to trust it. And it just, again, it might just be something you guys are going through right now. I am getting this sense of just like um, people perceive you as feeling naive or feeling incapable. That's not how they, what they think of you. Let me be clear about that. But I think they, they think that you are hesitating because you're afraid of looking stupid in the eyes of others or looking silly. But what I'm getting is there's something deeper going on that people are unable to see. And so, you know, most people reside on the surface of things, right? Not you guys drawn to my channel, of course. Um, most people see more reflections of themselves than anything. And especially when it can trigger a rejection wound in someone else, the likelihood of them making it mean something um, false is very high because their own protection mechanisms have kicked in and they're not seeing things as they really are because now their ego has gotten involved, right? So again, I'm just getting this, people, are, people really want to get to know you. Yeah, I feel like this too is representing people want to like have that that full energy with you. People really just want to jump into a friendship or relationship. Like they want to explore with you. They want to, they just feel like this innocence around you and they love being around you. They want to get to know you more, but it's like you're very cautious of letting anyone in. 
So let's see what else is, let's see what's going on. What are you guys going through? So what's the reality of it? Ah, we have grief. So you guys might have lost someone or something dear to you extremely recently. I am getting this sense of like a, a lover or like a relationship has ended. So you're going through this healing period and you don't want to jump into something new. Even if people are just offering their friendship, I feel like for the most part, it's like you can't get close to things being anywhere similar to a relationship. That's going to apply to some of you. I think some of you have also lost a loved one recently or even within the past, the past couple years. You know, the grieving period is going to look different for many, many people, but there's something that's something lost. You have lost something very near and dear to you that has kind of shaken up your world. Yeah, I'm getting a heaviness of the heart. There's also many snakes here. So it's like maybe it feels like one thing after another. Like I feel like you almost see what's going on right now as like a punishment for the universe. So no matter how much you actually do want to get to know someone, I feel like a deeper part of you is like, well, I'm just going to lose it anyway. So why even bother? It almost feels like you feel like you're being punished. I don't know if I said that already, but it, you feel like you're being punished by the universe. And so you don't want to mess up a good thing. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm feeling kind of sh short of breath. <laughs> don't worry, I don't have a fever or coughing. Uh, no, but I'm getting like a shallowness of breath. So it's almost like, like it's been hard for you to catch your breath. It's almost like one wave after another, it seems. It's a lot of heaviness. And so that, you know, I'm not surprised that people would be perceiving just the very tippity top of this. What else is coming up? Let's see the tarot. Okay, we have the devil. Hmm. Six of swords. Okay. A lot of heaviness. And five of swords. Yeah, man. I mean, this is confirming. There's just like, there's a tough period you guys are going through. It seems like, yeah, with the six and the five, it's like it's already happened. Like maybe there was like some sort of tower moment, but it's like your worst fears have been kicked up to the surface or it's like you're deep in illusion with this moon and the devil coming up. It's like you're really believing the negativity here and granted you know maybe you guys are already seeing that because our higher selves will only direct us to resources when we're kind of already feeling and intuiting things that are necessary to set us free so it's like i think you guys are already seeing the cage you've kind of put yourself in to protect yourself i feel like on one hand you want to reach out to other people but i think you're just like you feel very confused right now. You know, we have both, we have a lot of swords. We have two swords cards coming up. It's like, it's in the realms of your mind. Not to say that it didn't have a basis in reality, but I feel like whatever happened, you guys, triggered you into a spiral of just like self-loathing and doubting yourself, doubting your abilities, not seeing how beautiful you are. It's like all of these people, one, two, three, besides the devil, because he's staring straight into your soul. <laughs> straight into your soul um but these other beings have their eyes down and their eyes are closed you know so it's like that when we see people with their eyes down and their eyes closed it just represents a level of kind of just like apathy might not be the best word but it's just like feeling solemn and feeling just beat down by life is what i'm feeling here I feel like it's been a, it's a challenge for you at this time to see your greatness, to see how good you are. Like you guys are going through an intense shedding of skins and it might be this one experience that happened kind of, kind of, what is the word? It's like a domino effect. 
it was maybe activating a core wound that you know our core wounds from there kind of stems other wounds so it's like if you think of like a flower there's like that core right but off of it stems all these different petals it's like a core wound was penetrated that you guys may not have been aware of and so it's kind of leaking into all other areas of life it's causing you to doubt many areas of your life if not all of them um or if anything you guys just feel like unable to move forward because the pain is so heavy it's it's too hard to bear but just understand the devil is not uh, necessarily a negative card because it's like when we're in the throes of our karma and we understand that our deep karmic wounds are being activated it's only when we have that level of detachment from what's happening like if you can see and if you understand the metaphysics of what's happening you are leagues ahead of people that are lost in it and i don't think you're lost in it you probably feel that way based off what i'm seeing here you feel like there's no way out this is a deep depression it's almost interesting it almost looks like the devil's hair is leading into the six of swords so it's like i feel like it's getting lighter though like you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel like this little guy here he's like celebrating and it's like the six of swords is leading you in that direction of celebration like it's lightening its load on you and i almost i see this going six five five four three two one so i was i immediately saw the ace of swords in my mind's eye so it's like you know spirit is basically saying and telling me that you are about to have a major breakthrough and i think deep down you kind of feel that it's like you are going through a period, like you're going to feel like renewed. You're going to feel like this fool card all over again. It's going to feel like, like you're going to feel so much lighter on the other side of this transformation. Like this period, it feels like a death period. So let's see what the bridge is between these two. The King of Pentacles. So I kind of pulled this card to represent, you know, what's actually going on or like the accuracy of things. Or this card was kind of like, is what they're perceiving in alignment with what's actually happening. And just uh, just because I'm this way, so we have a crocodile coming through. I'm sorry, that's a cobra. And we have other snakes, the deer, the duckling, and many crows. So you might be seeing many of these right now, or you might be seeing them in the rest of this week we also have a horse coming through so yeah there this is kind of confirming to me oh we also have antlers so like that deer energy but that analogy i just used about the flower it's like there is gold that lies at the center of this core wound that was activated this is going to build you up this is part of your foundation you guys whatever you're going through you're going to get over this i feel like this is you know, the saying that just came through is no mud, no lotus. So, you know, the most, one of the most sacred flowers on our planet is the lotus. And the lotus only grows when it's submerged in mud and muck. And so, no matter how it seems at this time, this is going to build you up. You're going to feel like, man, this is when resiliency is built. This is when... We really get to know who we are. And I feel like somehow this ties into what you're here to bring to the planet just because this is the card of the pentacles. Like this is going to aid in whatever it is you're here to gift to the planet at this time. It's like this king of pentacles is offering this flower. It's like you're offering it up to God. It's like you're taking your, your heaviness and you're taking the things that are weighing you down the most on a holistic level like this feels like ah gosh i feel this to my core i feel like you guys are aching like your spirits man but you'll see on the other side of this like this is part of your foundation right the trees that can withstand the most storms are the trees that have the deepest roots right and what what brings us into greater depth within ourselves is going through these experiences, right? A skilled sailor, 
doesn't navigate just smooth seas, right? A skilled sailor knows how to navigate through the storms. That's what makes it so skilled, so skillful. So I feel like people are kind of intuiting that there's something going on, right? I kind of noticed within that deer's eyes, it's like there's something going on, like weathered. Weathered kept coming up and it's like, these pictures depict like storms. So like, yeah, the fact that the devil is coming up underneath the fool, that was kind of the resistance. It's like, you feel like by stepping into a new relationship or a new partnership or a new friendship or anything new, that's like good. It's like you are like feeling like you're the hand of the devil is reaching out to you. Like it, it is too good to be true almost. Or you feel unworthy of it. But again, you're just remember there's a lot of veils. You guys are mired in illusion right now, right? You guys have a deep core wound that's been activated. A deep karmic knot has made itself known. So just keep in mind that that's going to color how you're seeing the rest of your reality. But ultimately, like you are a king, you are a queen. You wouldn't be going through this experience if you didn't have the wherewithal to do it. I'm not sure if that came up in this reading, but it's like the beings that are the strongest are the beings that have chosen to take on the most within this incarnation. I mean, that's even been, been studied and researched between like, during like past life regressions and like when people are planning their next lifetime in the bardo as the tibetan book of the dead would call it you know that phase between lives it's like the souls that came to do the most work for themselves and for the planet they have likely chosen so much and they have chosen like to have experiences that were so heavy right and that's also a shaman a shaman will go through these initiations where they're not sure if they're actually going to make it out alive. Some shamans don't. Psychologically speaking, spiritually speaking, uh, and even like physically speaking, some shamans don't make it out alive. But when they do, man, like their healing is extended to the rest of the tribe and everyone that comes around them. And that's where this somberness, like this weathered nature, it's like it's not even something that people see sadness in your eyes. They're like, this person has seen a lot. And that's why you are a king. That's why you stand apart from many people or you're a queen, right? Is because you have seen so much. And it's like, those are our strongest warriors because you, you know how to navigate the pitfalls. You're engaging in the battle. You're not running from it, right? Even if people kind of perceive you as being a little bit skittish right now, it's like, it's because you are... You know, you're being selfless right now in the sense that you know you need to go through this healing. You're being selfish for yourself in a good way. Like you need this healing, but you also don't want to drag other people into, yeah, you don't want the devil to pull other people into your heaviness, right? And like if there are people that you can lean on, obviously do that. This is not saying that like, you know, don't drag people into your shit. That's not what I'm saying at all, right? Do what you got to do. You know what I mean? But Overall, I just get the sense that you're very mindful of other people and energy and you're very mindful of how you want other people to feel. And so you're just afraid. You're just a little bit cautious right now of letting people too far in because I think ultimately you know this is a journey you have to take by yourself. You know, with all the snake imagery, yeah. So you guys will make it out. You will, if you're seeing this video, I would say the worst is always is already over, right? As much as you can detach from your mind, it seems like your mind is kind of perpetuating a lot of this shadow and a lot of this darkness. But again, go through your grieving process, man, right? Thank you for your service. Thank you for being here. And I hope I see you soon.